This is the Marketing Umbrella Podcast, where it's all about getting the information you need from successful leading marketers to build and grow your digital marketing agency. Brought to you by Itumar Shafir, founder and CEO of Umbrella, the technology platform and brand that is powering thousands of marketing agencies around the country. Find him at UmbrellaUS.com. Now, here's your host, Kevin Pruitt. This is the Marketing Umbrella Podcast, and I have a very special guest with me today, but we do this podcast for one reason, one reason only, and that is to, to provide an opportunity for marketing experts to share their story and really to help marketing, to make marketing agency owners grow and scale their agencies. But our guest today is the founder of Remotely Talents, a headhunting agency that helps businesses to hire offshore talent. He's got 10 plus years of experience managing remote teams and recruiting offshore talent around the world. Since starting his first business in 2008, he's used offshore talent to drive growth for a beverage consulting business and e-commerce ventures. Today, he's focused on helping other businesses drive growth with offshore talent. Join me in welcoming my friend Adomas Pranavicius to the Marketing Umbrella Podcast. Domus, thanks again for joining us. Hello, Kevin. Hello, everyone. Nice to be here. We uh, we tried this last week, and and uh, he was in a in a really remote location. He was actually doing it out of his out of his vehicle, and the the internet just just wasn't going to do him justice. So I said, "Hey, let's wait till we can get a little better connection because I really want to highlight your story." This is really a unique episode that we have here, and and our listeners, I think, are going to be really amazed at at kind of the heart behind the business, but. You know, that's bios are so short. They're they're so, you know, concise. What else uh, would you share about yourself or about what you're doing that uh, that might help round it out a little bit? Uh, do you want the long story or the short one? Well, maybe we'll start with the short one right now and then we'll <laughs> we'll unpack it later. Uh, OK, so uh, this is my third business already. Uh, before that, I had a beverage uh, for 12 years. I was building beverage development consulting company. Then I shifted to uh, e-commerce. Uh, and uh, when the war in Ukraine started, uh, I decided I need to do something and uh, to help them. And remotely talents was a way how... I'm I'm helping them. So I launched Remotely Talents one month after the war in Ukraine broke out. Uh, I had some experience, uh, like uh, basically for my e-commerce business, ninety uh, percent of my team was uh, from Ukraine. So mm. I already had experience hiring from Ukraine, and and uh, I I just wanted them somehow to find a way to help, and I was a bit interested in HR, and you know everything connected and I decided to, to, to launch this headhunting company and uh, it just uh, started to grow. So this is, this is a short story. The short version. Yeah. So the, the amazing thing, and, and we've talked to off camera at, at different times that the amazing thing that, about the, your whole story is that, you know, it's like, you know, two perfect things happen. You, you saw a need as a whole of being able to hire offshore but you also saw that you know what I can really help people that are that are really um, being harmed by the war, you know, right now, and are in a in a very unique situation. So I love that, and I, I love the fact that you've kind of seen these two things and put them together. Actually, it was really a high risk bet uh, because when I launched it, I received a lot of uh, uh, bad, how to say bad comments bad feedbacks because mm. uh, pe some people are were saying that i'm trying to use the situation actually after one year of operations i started to receive apologies from them that yeah. sorry sorry that we misunderstood you what you're doing blah 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 but in any case uh, the approach how i did was a bit uh maybe i'll tell you the, the whole story because uh, i i have a camper and i travel a lot with my camper uh so uh, I went uh, to the woods of Lithuania with my camper one van to, to, and spent one week. And during this one week, I did, decided to basically launch Remotely Talents and test it just to see what's, what will happen. So in one week, uh, we have good internet connection in Lithuania, uh, wherever we go. So uh, I did around... Uh, 
10, 12 uh, interviews with senior HR people. I interviewed them and I recruited full-time one senior person. Uh, I built a website in one week. Uh, I prepared an agreement uh, for our services and I found uh, the first customer uh, in one week period. So, uh, well, the, the first customer was my friend, so I, I should, you know, maybe it's not a, a thing to be, you know, to, to point out, but, but still uh, in one week, launched the website, hired the person and started selling. And uh, I think in the... In, in the week two, or like we already had two or three clients who were interested in uh, hiring Ukrainians and, you know, things things started to move. Today, like uh, we are hiring uh, approximately eight Ukrainians a month. Wow. Uh, we expanded uh, our sourcing and we do sourcing not only in Ukraine because like obviously the business grew and uh, not all the roles are capable. Ukraine is not capable to offer experts in all of the of the fields, and uh, we needed to expand. So right now we are sourcing in all uh, Central and Eastern Europe. Mm. I have a team of uh, uh, four uh, senior recruiters, uh, and and my goal uh, is to grow to at least thirty projects, thirty headhunting projects a month. Uh, so. So it's 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 still young. Uh, the you, you know it's a good timing to have this call because today it's actually it's a birthday of remotely talents. It's one year since I start started it officially. Today, uh, yes. <laughs> like I, I, complete, I, I completely forgot about that and just like Google reminder popped out and <laughs> reminded me about this. Uh, yeah, it's not a big deal for me, but still, it's it's a nice thing that we're operating for twelve months. It's the business is growing, and I'm I'm super proud of the fact that uh, we launched it. We helped many Ukrainians to 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 find full time employment. Mm -hmm. They didn't need to run from the country. They they can get a good salary, competitive salary, and and they can support their local economy. I'm really proud of that, and it makes uh, before uh, I was selling some. Uh, supplements online uh as an e-commerce business owner and uh you know i have understood that uh, I, I need some i needed some kind of serious purpose in my in my life and right mm. now when i have this bigger mission i feel way better as a person so uh it, it's it's a good feeling so so tell me this, let's say the war had started in Romania or started in Estonia or whatever, would you have had the same, um, number one, would you have had the same reason to, to, I guess, focus on that country? And number two, would you have had, you know, similar talent bases to draw from? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Like, uh, let's see, I'm from Lithuania. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm based in Vilnius and uh, uh, we have a history with Russia uh like uh when this happened uh for the uh, after, on february 24th uh for the next two weeks i couldn't sleep as many of my friends uh i i was just following what's happening and mm. uh, i was following the battles and uh, i i just couldn't believe that this thing uh, happened in general and i still cannot believe that this is yeah. happening uh i don't like to answer your question in terms of uh, if this would happen in, in uh, Romania or Poland or whatever, I don't know. I don't know how I would have acted. Uh, I just know that I wanted to act uh, and uh, this was how I did it. Uh, is it good or bad? <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just do stuff. Well, yeah, so, I, I can answer that question. I, I I think if you ask the Ukrainians that are that are being hired through remotely talents, I think they would certainly say this is this is good that you focused on that. But are they are they but also you know Ukraine Ukraine was always a market uh, was always a number one market to hire offshore talent. Yeah, uh, even for sure companies in Europe they were hiring Ukrainians, especially development talent. Um, Companies from USA, they are hiring Ukrainians a lot. And, and uh, for as offshore talent, majority of them, they are for development roles. Uh, mm -hmm. Fun fact that 80%, like 70% of our projects are related to marketing. 
and only 20% of the of our project related to development talent. So most of the projects that we do are marketers. So mm-hmm. this is a bit, a bit different thing than I, I expected, but uh, uh, we we source for people according to our client requirements. So yeah. If they require marketers, we source marketers. So when you talk about development, are set primarily in the tech space? Uh, in terms of our customers, you mean? No, you said you know twenty eighty percent is is like marketing and or or digital development. And, and, I, I mean, digital. developers, developers yeah. like yeah. Uh, full stack, Shopify, Webflow, right. name it, uh, right? Python developers yeah. like that. And actually, that, I thought and, that percentage was a lot higher. I thought I thought that was almost flipped. You know, because uh, I knew you actually, did other space, but yeah, I thought it was. It I was expecting. I was actually, when I started, I was expecting completely different dynamics. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, market is, uh, I, I I react to the need to the, of the market. If they yeah. need marketers, I search for marketers. <laughs> As a true marketer does, you know, you react yes. to, the, to the market. So, so this, you know, our, our audience primarily is agency owners, marketing agency owners. So if you're speaking to them about remotely talents, what is the, uh, what's what's the unique selling point other than the fact that you're sourcing people, you know, from a war zone? But what what do they need to be considering, um, you know, about remotely talents, you know, when they're thinking about working with their clients and open positions and things like that? Uh, so, first of all, you mentioned war zone. War zone, uh, like uh, Ukraine is not like uh, war is happening only in the eastern part of the country. Yeah. So it's it's uh, it's safe to hire Ukrainians. Mm-hmm. Uh, because the majority of population is located in the west side of the country, where it's safe. Uh, they have the electricity, they have internet. Internet's because, working and everything, yeah. Yeah, because I received comments, like, actually from, like, three, from our, four, uh, I have four recruiters, so three of our recruiters are Ukrainians, and they are working in, in Ukraine. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, uh, I didn't have any connection problems I so far actually our clients never complained about some kind of connection or right. electricity or things like that. So it's it's over like it's a media thing I, I I presume. So speaking to to marketing agency owners, what's the what is the the benefit to remotely talents other than just hiring? Is there or is there a broader you know application that you see? Uh, so our job, uh, you see, like uh, when I'm speaking with marketing agency owners or e-commerce business owners, these are two biggest type segments mm-hmm. of our clients. Uh, in general, they don't know how to hire offshore and mm. uh, they have a problem identifying talent uh, and uh, talking to them. And uh, uh, the problem that we are solving is that uh, we are local. We're local. We are sourcing for basically local talent and talking with them in their language and uh, recommending only those who are suitable uh, according to the client requirements. Uh, second second thing is that uh, in general, this business model, this is a very old school uh, business model, like headhunting. So mm-hmm. uh, we are not charging our customers uh, in advance. So we are successful only when the customer is successful. So they pay only when they hire a success, like a higher uh, candidate that we recommend. So uh, uh, we do some projects where companies are not hiring, but we are spending 30, 40, sometimes even 50 hours per project. And then the client decides not to hire. So it's part of the human resources business, HR mm-hmm. business. And uh, this is the risk that we are taking. But getting back to your question, our value proposition is that we can help you identify great talent in a quick manner, and you will not need to spend a ton of time interviewing those candidates and searching yeah. for them. And you you also, I mean, it's not just the quantity of candidates that you're onboarding. You guys do a great job of kind of pre-vetting, you know, the, the applicants. You know exactly who it is that, you know, you've got a very comprehensive picture of the applicant and to meet the, you know, how does it fit for the open positions that you're trying to trying to fill? Yeah, usually the, the interesting thing is that most of the cases we are recruiting for like similar roles. So we already know uh, what to ask uh, and how to qualify the candidate. We already have approximately 5,000 
candidates database uh, and when we launch a uh, 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 like some kind of new job headhunting project, we distribute this uh, to our database and we already know whom to contact and who might be suitable for the role. Also, uh, what's very important is that we do interviews in English language. So we check the quality, the skills of their uh, English and, and uh, uh, we do not, nev we never introduce those who are not capable, you know, to speak fluently. Mm -hmm. That is that is uh, any other languages, French, Spanish. What if what if companies come to you that have those needs? Uh, in in terms of language or 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 what? Yeah, like language, like like let's say a French company comes to you and says, "Hey, we actually need somebody that you know English is great because it's kind of the lingua franca of business, but yeah. you know we also need them to be able to speak French." Do you have people in your database that have other language capabilities too? Yes, of course we have, and our number, our second biggest market is France, actually. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, usually, like uh, we don't have these requirements. Uh, so, for example, marketing agency or development agency from e-commerce development agency mm -hmm. for France, they are interested for to talk with him in English yeah. and uh, to deliver him the like the to deliver. Uh, the job uh, in English language because most of them they are working internationally. So, but but in general, my biggest market and my target market, uh, more than ninety seven percent is US. Mm -hmm. So uh, English is the main main language that we do business, and it's our top number one requirement for the candidates. Right. So it's it's interesting. You you said you, it's the one year anniversary of Remotely Talents, which is cer certainly something to celebrate. But I'm I'm curious if you look back over that the past year, what are some things that uh, maybe have surprised you since that weekend you went in the woods in your camper van and and launched this business? Uh, I think two things. Uh, so the first of all that we didn't do so like develop, developers is not a very popular uh, category that we work in uh only 20 percent. so this was the number one and uh, the second one is that uh, probably it's it's very difficult to uh project or plan the flow of the projects uh, hr business is super dynamic uh, super dynamic. I didn't expect that uh, it will be so dynamic. So you can like uh, you can have a month when uh, like three weeks you you do not launch any new project, uh, and uh, on the fourth week uh, suddenly you launch ten projects. Mm. Uh, and and this is this is tiring because it's very difficult to plan in advance yeah. Uh, yeah. how many projects you will get and when you will get. Uh, yeah, but uh, in terms of in general, in terms for remote talent and offshore talent, I see that uh, uh, obviously economy, global economy is going down. And uh, US, for example, business owners are looking for ways how to save uh, mm -hmm. the cost and they are looking how to hire, where to hire offshore. And yep. uh, the demand for this type of services is increasing. Demand for offshore uh, talent is increasing as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are explored, exploring ways. And uh, in, interesting thing is that uh, um, only right now, like it's it's quite common when uh, common when uh, uh, a marketing agency or like e-commerce business is hiring offshore. But what I notice is that more and more old school type of businesses are entering this, and they are starting to hire offshore. For example, we have like. Uh, Starting from su supplement company or raw material or beverage company, uh, they are starting to hire offshore because mm -hmm. the owners, business owners start to realize that they can save like up to 60, 70, sometimes 80% of cost mm -hmm. yeah. and, and hire a mid, well, they will not save 80% for senior talent, but at least mid talent, yes. Uh, so they can hire mid senior level uh, people offshore and uh, uh, pay way, way more or less. So they start to explore these possibilities as well. I mean, it seems like to me, looking back, you launched this at a really unique time. And so we were coming kind of out of COVID, 
you know, last year slightly. So there was still this idea that we're, we're work, working remotely. So that, that certainly worked in your favor. Then yeah. you, you're saying also that, you know, because inflation's, you know, higher globally and price and, and, you know, the economies are slowing down, companies have to look for cost saving measures. So it, and it, I mean, those are two things that are certainly working. You know, I mean, that are, that are really working in your favor, you know, right now to, to cause people to look, you know, at this, at this alternative option and just work has become asynchronous, you know, over the last, you know, three years. So all it's like, you know, all three things are working to, to increase the demand, you know, for a service, you know, like you're trying to provide. And, and it will only increase. I don't think that it's like, like right now we can, we can find a lot of articles on the media that remote is, uh, is dying. Remote work is dying and it's not going to work. Nope. <laughs> it's a new habit. Yeah. It's a new habit. It and, I uh, love it. And it's not going anywhere. And I see people, I see candidates who are interested to work only remote. Senior level talents, uh, developers, marketers, they are not planning to go back to the office. No, absolutely. And, and I think, you know, as, as some companies are starting to kind of flip that and say, you know, we're, we're bringing people back in the office, they're, they're seeing 20% of their workforce say, no, we're not coming back. And I mean, that's a huge problem, you know, it is for the, for the companies because it's, it's not easy to hire anyway, you know, and now that you, you lost 20% of your workforce overnight because they, they refuse to come back in the office, you know, it's a, it's a double, double whammy, you know, so to speak. I mean, it's a, has a double effect. But you see, it, it depends, it depends on the role. So for example, I wouldn't ever recommend to hire a junior level or a young person to work remotely because they don't. They, they don't know how to do it. Mm. They need they need management, sometimes even micromanagement. You need to show them how to work. They, you need to educate them. Yeah. But when, you, when we are talking about mid-senior level talent, they already yeah. know how to work. They yeah. already know what they have to do. And they yeah. just want to let them work. <laughs> yeah, they, they know how to manage their work day. They know how to manage their workflow and, and manage projects. That, that's, a, that's a great distinction for sure. I um I want to shift a little bit right now. This is this is one that just comes up virtually every interview we get to we get to talk about on the marketing umbrella. But just a, this whole AI chat GPT space, you know, the the this life changing you know uh, phenomenon that is happening out there. How do you see that affecting uh, the job openings that you're recruiting for? How do you see you know the impact in the near future for AI and for like chat GPT? Uh, personally, I'm using it a lot. I'm using it every day uh, for various of uh, things. Uh, I don't like I, I had uh, I saw some discussions in HR industry that uh, uh, business owners or recruiters are afraid that they will lose their job. Personally, I'm not afraid at all because it's still uh, hiring people is still uh, you need to communicate with them. There is a mm -hmm. part where uh, which couldn't be programmed or automated. Uh, this is why I like uh, and what I see from my side uh, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, uh, I see that chat GPT, like the boring businesses, uh, will become more and more interesting because uh, like the boring, I mean like like service type of businesses or businesses that cannot be automated mm -hmm. uh, uh, because uh, entrepreneurs will start to search, you know, how to, uh, ChatGPT can do everything for them yeah. Uh, yeah. right now. So if, if you're going, if you're planning to compete with ChatGPT, you're like, uh, you're like IE, artificial intelligence, I mean, uh, you will lose obviously. So, uh, I, in terms of uh, for recruiting business, it we are using it almost. Uh, we're using it to uh, identify good candidates. Mm -hmm. We're using it to prepare job descriptions. We're using it to scrape the internet uh, as a web scraper. Mm -hmm. uh, we we're using it for data enrichment, uh, database enrichment. Uh, so it's a like it's an amazing tool. Uh, and if you're not using it and if you're missing it, you're already, you're already you're behind. Already, you're already behind and a lot. I I love that this, just the optimistic outlook that you're, you're like, you know, it's not, 
it's it's we're adapting. It's not eliminating, you know, our roles. It's it's we're we're adapting to to make our roles more effective, utilizing these new tools. And and uh, I mean, it, you're you're always on the cutting edge anyway. I mean, you always seem to be <laughs> on the leading edge, the kind of the point of the spear, you know, so to speak. So I but, love that. You know, the, in terms of artificial intelligence, in any case, at the end of the day, you need to know how to give, like, to how to write a prompt. Yeah. If you don't know how to ask a question, you will not get an answer. <laughs> that's a good. That that's true for podcasters too, by the way. That we, yeah. We have to be able to ask good questions. So. Yeah. So so right now we're going to this direction that basically as a species as a human beings we need to learn to ask questions and uh, I've, I've witnessed this uh, man during my career business career that sometimes two people are talking but they are talking about different things because they do not know how to ca ask questions mm -hmm. so uh, so probably artificial intelligence will help us to learn to to, <laughs> to, to ask right questions yes yeah so it I one other question that I kind of want to shift to the, our, our speed round here. But uh, one question that I have is that I know you're focused primarily on Ukraine right now, maybe exclusively. But do you see? No, no, the, we're, doing, we're doing Central Eastern Europe, Ukraine okay, that, as well. Yeah. And, that was my question. What are you what's the expansion plans, other countries? Um, and is it I mean, is do you see this even moving, you know, outside of Central and Eastern Europe? Uh, for the moment, um, the business, the, the the focus is Central Eastern Europe, and uh, I have plans maybe to expand because you see, like Central Eastern Europe is perfect to hire mid senior level talent for like marketing, yeah. for tech roles, for finance, e commerce. Uh, I see business owners; they are interested also in operations, administration type of roles. I wouldn't say that Central Eastern Europe is is a, like is competitive uh, in terms of uh, these type of roles. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm like uh, I probably in the future we'll be expanding into uh, Asia or uh, Latin countries. So, right. but it's still it's still like uh, still in a, a long term plan right now. Central Eastern Europe. Ukraine plus Central Eastern Europe. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's in the region still, but uh, I'm I'm in the process of building the brand, getting more and more projects. It's only you know twelve months that we are operating, so we need to build trust. Uh, I cannot expand too quickly, and you yeah. see the, this business. This business is difficult because the more projects I get, the the bigger team I have to have. Mm -hmm. uh, what one professional recruiter is capable to 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 manage like seven, eight ongoing projects effectively. So the more projects I have, the more recruiters I need to uh, hire. And uh, it, it takes time. So you cannot you cannot scale this type of business too quickly. Uh, right now we are in the, in the process to build the brand, to get more traction, get more projects, and to talk with the business owners, even understand what type of needs they have. It is. It is certainly going to be exciting to watch the growth of uh, remotely talents over the next, you know, few months and years, and and just see how how that expansion happens, and and how you even refine the process, you know, over the years as, as you get better and better at it. But I want to want to shift right now to our rapid fire questions. This is I'm going to ask you really quick questions, just really short, you know, concise answers on these. Uh, just first thing that this comes to mind. So, uh, did you get along with the, your parents growing up? More or less. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Do you have siblings? No. Uh, do you currently have a pet? No. Uh, children? Daughter, five-year-old. Oh. What time do you wake up in the morning? Uh, 7 a.m. And what time do you normally go to bed? 11 p.m. Ideal vacation spot. Money, not an object. Anywhere in the world. Uh... Thailand because of food. <laughs> That's right. Uh, how does faith affect your work? Uh, oh, it's a good question. Uh, I'm highly driven by mission, uh, mm. but faith, uh, it's not a big part of my, honestly, not a big part of my life. Yeah, it's interesting. I believe, I believe in energy. There. 
I believe in energy, uh, but I don't believe in the guy above the clouds. Okay. Right. Closing question. What is one thing that one concise thing that you could change in the whole marketing space if you were like king for a day? Ooh. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, but I would remove uh, probably uh, iOS uh, 14 updates. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> Well, because it's uh, it ruined a lot. Like I, I believe Apple ruined uh, the life of majority of uh, marketers when when they decrease the amount of data that uh, uh, pixels are receiving, and uh, it yes. became more difficult to do it. I I certainly understand that. Certainly understand <laughs> it. Man, Adomas, it's been uh, it's been great to reconnect with you and and just to hear your story and to share it with our our audience. And I just really appreciate you coming on the show and just sharing your expertise and sharing just the the insights that you've gained. You, you know, not just the last year, but over you know many years of of running startups and kind of being in the marketing marketing space. But we just want to thank you for your time and just once again, we want to share this with marketing agency owners to help them grow and scale their business. Domus, thanks again. Have a great day, buddy. Thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you for tuning in to another great episode of the Marketing Umbrella Podcast, where we provide the information you need from successful leading marketers to build and grow your digital marketing agency. To learn more, go to UmbrellaUS.com.